Hi guys, what's up? My name is Tom and welcome back to the FPL Center. In today's video, we're going to be having a look at some of the best value players available in the Fantasy Champions League game this season among midfielders and forwards. If you want to see more content on the Champions League Fantasy game in future, make sure to give this video a like and get yourself subscribed if you're not already. And before we take a look at the players, I'd just like to mention two important tips for building your team. So teams from groups A to D will always play on the same day, and teams from groups E to H will also always play on the same day. So when considering rotation or bench options, it's important to keep in mind who you're going to be able to rotate with or substitute. For example, choosing two goalkeepers from groups A to D is not a good idea as this will mean that your first choice keeper, if he has a disappointing game or he's benched or he's injured or something happens, you're not going to have a substitute option available for the next day. Since both goalkeepers you've chosen are from groups A to D, they'll both have already played on the same day. Also remember that unlike FPL, where team selection is locked one hour before kickoff of the first game in the game week, Fantasy Champions League lineups do not lock until the actual kickoff of the first game. This means that valuable team information, like who's starting, for the first set of games in each week is going to be announced before Fantasy lineups lock. So we're going to have a look at midfielders. And first up, we have to go with Liverpool's James Milner, with 30% of players already owning him, it seems as though many people are already keen on including him in their teams. This means from both a value perspective and an ownership perspective, he's an important player in this year's game at 5.5 million euros. In last season's Champions League campaign, which obviously saw Liverpool make it all the way to the final of the competition, Milner recorded a total of 9 combined goals and assists. That's one more than Lionel Messi managed. He's playing well in the Premier League this season so far too. He started all four games for Liverpool, chipping in with one goal and two assists as well. When on the pitch, Milner seems likely to be Liverpool's nominated corner taker and is on penalties, giving him that extra set-piece boost. A player who is quite simply in scintillating form heading into the group stages is Benfica's midfield maestro Pizzi. Benfica have played four games in the Portuguese Liga Nos so far, and in those four games, Pizzi has already scored four goals and provided two assists. That's six goal contributions in just four games. On top of that, in the four Champions League qualifier matches that Benfica have played, Pizzi has contributed a further two goals and an assist. Quite simply, the man is on fire right now. When you watch Benfica play, it's clear that he's the brains in the team, driving everything forward and definitely passes the eye test as well as having the stats to back it up. On top of all that, Pizzi is Benfica's nominated penalty taker. Despite being drawn against Bayern Munich, Benfica will have winnable games against the likes of Ajax and AEK Athens in Group E, and you have to imagine that Pizzi will be able to find the back of the net on what will hopefully be more than one occasion. Next we'll take a look at another player from Group C with Napoli's Piotr Zielinski. The Polish playmaker has started the season in great form with two goals in three Serie A games so far and seems to be flourishing in attack under new manager Carlo Ancelotti. Priced at 6.5 million euros, if he carries his form into the Champions League opener, he could return big points against Red Star Belgrade in game week one and continue to be a solid rotation option as your fourth midfielder in a group that promises a lot of attacking football in every game. And finally among midfielders, Marlos comes into the start of the Champions League having started all seven of Shakhtar's league games so far this season, scoring four goals and recording an assist in the process. The 30-year-old Brazilian primarily plays as the Ukrainian outfit's central attacking midfielder and is a key part of most attacks picking up the ball in the spaces between the midfield and strikers, helping to drive things forward. He finds himself in a group where Shakhtar pose a legitimate threat to anyone, with Man City, Lyon and Hoffenheim all having to make the trip to the Ukraine. While Man City are favourites to win the group, it's probably going to be between Shakhtar and Lyon for second place. If Shakhtar are going to qualify for the first knockout stages, Marlos will inevitably be a key player in helping them to do just that. So now we'll take a look at the forwards, and first up is Vincent Abubakar from Porto. The Cameroon international has recorded three goals and an assist in four appearances so far this season, and in last year's Champions League campaign, he returned five goals and two assists in just six games. With that kind of recent form and track record in the competition, coming in at 6.5 million euros it really feels like Abubakar is a steal in this year's game. 
and with 17% ownership already, he's proving to be a popular choice. With games in Group D coming against Lokomotiv Moscow, Schalke and Galatasaray, it would take a brave man to bet against the Porto striker doing quite well once again. A recent signing from Barcelona, Paco Alcácer made a scoring debut off the bench for Dortmund in their 3-1 win this week against Frankfurt. Priced at 7.5 million euros in the game, he could provide great value as a striker for an attacking side in a group that features Atletico Madrid, AS Monaco and Club Bruges. Now you'd have to imagine there were goals in a couple of those games there for Dortmund and if Alcácer can get a starting spot as the key striker, he could return well. He's one to keep an eye on and I wouldn't recommend going into the first set of games with Alcácer in your side, but he could be a great pick to add on your wildcard if it seems as though he's secured a starting role. Next up is a familiar name to any Premier League fans out there, as it's Ajax's Dusan Tadic, priced at 7 million euros. The Serbian winger signed for the Dutch Giants from Southampton in the summer and is listed as a forward in the Champions League game. He started all four league games so far this season, scoring three goals and recording one assist, and in the Champions League's qualifying rounds, Tadic also managed to make six appearances so far, and he's got a further three goals and three assists this season. It's clear the ex-Saint is in great form as he heads into a group containing Bayern Munich, Benfica and AEK Athens. Now, while the games against Munich may not be ideal, the others should give him a decent chance to show what he can do, as Ajax will fancy themselves to beat the Greek champions and will likely be highly competitive against Benfica as well. And finally, among the forwards, a name that you're all familiar with is Karim Benzema of Real Madrid. At 9.5 million euros, he falls among the cheapest premium options and could be a great price for a second forward alongside Messi or Ronaldo. In La Liga this season, Benzema has already scored four goals in just three games for Madrid, matching Messi's returns for Barcelona so far. It seems as though Ronaldo leaving to join Juventus may have allowed Benzema to step out of the shadows and flourish a little bit, as just three games into the season, he's only one goal shy of matching the five goals he scored in the whole of last season. With Real Madrid facing Roma, CSKA Moscow and Pulsenia, you have to imagine Benzema is going to get plenty of chances to show what he can do in front of goal as the reigning champions look to defend their crown. There are a few other players worth honourable mentions, and I'll leave their names in the description below. If you like this video and you want to see more Fantasy Champions League content, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and get yourself subscribed if you're not already. You can also follow me on Twitter, at FPL Center, for regular updates on my fantasy teams in both FPL and Fantasy Champions League. Make sure you also follow at FPL Matador. He's a veteran of the Fantasy Champions League game, with regular finishes in the top 1,000, he regularly tweets valuable information such as predicted team lineups and is more than willing to answer any questions you might have on the Champions League fantasy game. And finally, if you want to read Fantasy Champions League articles, check out at FPL Forum on Twitter who is releasing a series of articles summarising each group from a fantasy perspective. That's all from me today guys, thanks for watching.